Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about um, moving and interacting with some of the game elements with your robot. Um, we had a lot of questions um, about this subject pop up in the discussion board, so I thought we could um, address that and I'll show you what the mat looks like and move some pieces around just so you can kind of get a really good idea of what's supposed to be going on. So let me flip the camera around and show you what's up. All right, so here is the playing field with the game elements. If you haven't watched the video yet, showing or talking about the placement of these, you should. Um, it's linked below. And then um, let's talk about um, how to move these elements around and start getting some scores. So um, this game is set up that um, you are only allowed to touch game elements and robots that are in your safe zone, okay? So your robot has to be touching the safe zone before you can touch your robot. So if your robot is touching the white mat inside um, of the perimeter line, then it's inside. I can pick that up, I can reprogram it, I can turn it around, I can move it however I need to and send it back on its way. And it can go around the game field and if it comes back and is touching the mat again, once it touches this, the, once it touches the safe zone, then you can pick it up change programs, push buttons, reorient it. You could even um, put some different attachments on it, move parts around, whatever you need to do while it's in the safe zone, and then you can send it out on another mission. But the key word for your robot is, is it touching the white mat um, that's considered the safe zone inside the black perimeter? So if it's touching the uh, safe zone, yes, you can pick up your robot and do whatever you need to. If it's not, which that clearly is not in, then you're just kind of stuck. You have to wait for your robot to come and touch the mat right there before you can pick it up and do anything with it, okay? Um, now let's talk about game elements because that's a little bit different. These game elements don't have to be touching the mat. They just have to be inside the safe zone. So let's talk about this. Game elements are considered inside the safe zone if they are inside the black line, breaking the plane, defining the perimeter, okay? So in this case, let's use this fake dollar. Breaking the plane means, there's that line right there. That right there is breaking the plane of the perimeter. That, let me back it up. It's not quite breaking the plane yet because it's not going through. Let's zoom in. That's not quite through the perimeter line yet, but as soon as it breaks that plane like that, then you're golden. That's considered, um, that's considered in the safe zone right there. But that's not, not yet. That's not, not yet but that is right there. That's breaking the plane. All right, so there's that. What does that look like if it's, um, if it's one of the dice? So that is not breaking the plane. Let's move this over a little bit. Not breaking the plane, but then just a little bit further. Oh, come on, let's zoom in. That is breaking the plane. You can tell right there that it's over and broken the plane right there. So that's inside. So what does that mean? Well, once something is inside, you can pick it up. I can pick this up because it's breaking the plane. It's inside and I can do stuff with it. I can move them around. I can put them over here in the corner, save them for later. I could stack them on top of my robot if I wanted to and then let the robot go do something with it, okay? So there's a lot of cases in this game where you're gonna be bringing different elements into your safe zone so that you can do stuff with them. Um, one good case in point is with these Legos. Once that Lego is inside the safe zone, I can pick it up and then break it apart. I can use those as two separate elements now. I can stack those on top of each other. 
I could stack that up. Whatever I need to do to start building widgets is what I can do, okay? And again, if those elements are inside, I can pick them up and move them. If my robot is touching, I can pick it up and move it. And then really, that's when I can start combining some things. Whoa, hang on. Let me put those up here. Those go there. You can, ah, you can arrange those however you want. Um, hopefully you'll be better than me, but it doesn't matter. Um, once they're in the safe zone, you're able to pick them up, move them, reorient them, and let your robot do something with them. So what is your robot gonna do? Hopefully it's gonna try to score, right? It's gonna try to make some widgets and score them. So to be able to score a widget, it has to be on one of the five targets. You can see there's all five right there. And a target are these lines right here. So a target is two circles and two straight lines, okay? It's the black ink. So um, let's say that I've got a widget here. Let's just do this right here. This is a four element widget. So I've got the dollar, two dice, and a Lego brick. Um, and so a widget is described as um, a two, three, four, or five combination um, of elements that is touching a target. Um, and touching a target means that it's touching some of this black ink on there. So let me back that up. That element or that widget is scorable because it's touching the target. Um, let me move that over there. That, no brainer, man. That's an easy, that's a gimme. So that's touching the target. Let me show you another one. What about that right there? Three element widget touching the target. Yes, sir, that's a thing. What if we put that up there? Is that a widget? Yes. They're all touching each other and they're touching the target. Um, the key is that all of the elements of the widget have to be touching each other. So that is a good example. So they're all four elements touching each other. You can see that. And they're also touching a target. So that is a scorable widget right there. You can kind of see from different angles. Um, let's pull down some of these checkers and let's see what that would look like. So here's another widget. Let's build this. This one happens to be the Kiva plank and three checkers. That's a widget, but it's not scorable because it's not touching um, a target yet. So as soon as that moves over and is touching some of that black line right there that you can see, that is now a scorable widget. And that's worth um, points 20 times four. So that's an 80 point widget right there. And we'll take a look at the, um, the score sheet in just a minute. But you can no you'll notice that your robot is gonna move things around and hopefully start putting widgets on these targets to get them scored. This is an example. Let's look right, let me zoom in. Let's take a look at this. So on the surface, that looks like it's a two element widget right there because they're touching each other, maybe, and they're touching a target. But if we look really close, oh no, they're not touching each other. So that is not a scorable widget because really there's only one piece that's touching the target and that's not even a widget. That's just an element by itself. And then of course the one off here to the right, that's not even touching anymore. So that doesn't count. Now, if they were right, there, that's the difference right there between a widget and not a widget. All right, so you guys gotta be careful um, whenever your robots are, robots are building these to make sure that the elements are touching each other and they're also touching a target. Everybody cool with that? All right, so that's um, that kind of explains what the robots or how the robots have to be touching the safe zone and then how the elements um, need to be touching the target to be scored. I hope this video was helpful. And um, the next video I've got for you to watch, we'll talk about the score sheets and getting things scored um, at the end of the match. So hope this was helpful. Good luck to you guys. I'm excited to see what you come up with. See you later.